Hello, Akron fans! This is Shadow Fury 33 with another Expedition Match stream. First game today is going to be Wobas and Catalyte on Tomb of Heroes. So, Wobas and Catalyte we've both seen fairly recently, although Catalyte more so. He is a very aggressive player, tends to play CSO, goes for massive infantry rush strategies. Wobas, on the other hand, we haven't seen too often, so let's see how he plays out. So, we are seeing Wobas right now going for Vekir. Catalyte, on the other hand, is going for... well, he hasn't decided yet. Wobas, right off the bat, he has... Now well, he's going for some economy. It's not surprising. I mean, this map, you're going to see economy. You're going to see six LCRPs, maybe five and one, but usually six and zero at the start, and then eventually it'll go to, like, seven and four or something like that before players start actually fighting each other in four. So while Catalyte is going CISO, not sure if he's going to send all of his infantry forward. Actually, going to be doing any meaningful attacks. But Catalyte does not have any indication right now of what they're planning on doing. While Wobas, on the other hand, they are still kind of going economic to infantry front. This is not unusual. In fact, I'll just kind of fast forward because not much really to say about these players, honestly, other than Catalyte will just rush. Ah, there we go. No, actually, that's just Marine Special Ops. The. One Marine staying back home means that Catalyte probably isn't going for something too aggressive. Getting a bit away from the typical style. And Wobas going 5 and 1. So apparently going for slightly faster vehicles. Probably going to go for early tech as well. But it's really hard to say. Until we get to about 10 RPs total, it's a little difficult to tell. On this map at least. The map's large enough that basically players can get away with having slightly off or slightly less than optimal RP placements for whatever strategy they're planning on doing. Obviously you don't want to, but you can kind of get away with it. It's big enough. And Wobas, well, he's gone through in the center, and that's one scouting fight, which is not going to be that meaningful, honestly. Sorry, that not oh, Wobas. Catalyte got through. Wobas, I don't know. Honestly, it probably won't make a difference. That early scouting fight is kind of important because it does mean that units can go around but oftentimes players will just avoid it and then go around or echo it out so or it's not likely to cause any meaningful scouting to happen although Cadillac does see what Wobus is up to somewhat I mean only sees the one RP on Q Plasma that's the only thing that's slightly out of the ordinary and even then that's fairly ordinary but it looks like Wobus is actually going for double foundation meaning probably gonna go for okay there's the depot 245 mark we start the depot construction and the foundation not turning into an aerial control center quite yet so, fast tech, not likely, but then another QPRP, so definitely fast vehicles. Probably two or three Zion Pulsers, maybe Zion Turcher. Catalyst, on the other hand, wow. Nine and four before going for any other buildings, and then spamming out importers. And armories. I don't know what Catalyst is planning on doing. Okay, there's the factories, that's what I was about to say, because there's no QP cost in anything he has built thus far. Except tech. But yeah, he is going for a couple factories as well. And comp hub as well as that. A lot of production structures really exploding with production. Taking advantage of the map size. While Wobus, on the other hand, a couple Zion Pulsers, that's about it. Bear in mind, Wobus is about a minute down from Catalyte, but even then, Catalyte is exploding at this point. Wobus hasn't done anything to stop Catalyte, and Catalyte has now got a huge army to work with. Zion Pulsers meet up with Catalyze Marines. So Catalyze aware that there are skip Zion Pulsers coming in, or at least Zion Pulsers. Probably not aware of whether or not they are skip. Wobas sending in more Zion Pulsers on top of that. And going over to the north, Catalyze does have, at that point in time, Catalyze actually two minutes down from there. His fo point of focus is two minutes down from the battle that's currently going on. Catalyze jumping into the base, getting rid of special ops, getting rid of quite a few RPs. Although, at this point, Catalyze has... Actually, not a whole lot in reserve, so Catalyte will be slightly put off by this. Slow down a bit, not the biggest deal, but at the same time... Hey, this Zion Pulse is doing a pretty good job harassing. It's going around, closing up RP, it's just slowing everything down. Catalyte, however, does have enough units that are being built up, and will have a strong defense force by the time the second wave of Zion Pulsers come in. Hey, Wobas at the 503 mark is about a minute down from that battle, and... We do see the three Zion Pulsers that were being constructed last time we checked his base. Well, 30 seconds up from there, Catalyte getting that second factory, getting ATHCs, getting a macrofab. We saw that before, but only barely. I didn't comment on it at the time. 
four importers as well, and I think he might need one more importer. In fact, I'm fairly certain he they will because actually, I want to say Cadillac. I'm pretty sure his mail. Fairly certain he will because that is going to be a. Yeah, as you can see, it's already a bottleneck. Unless, in, unless the armories start building tech entirely, Catalyte will need another importer or two. Especially being that these impulses are in place to get rid of the importers. The one I'm about to go down, and the other one that's still dealing a fair amount of damage. I think that one of the importers is going to get killed in the process. Although it looks like Catalyte is not having to worry about that. Wobat's not paying attention to the importers. Import, importers are going to survive, paying attention to the RPs instead. And that is... Possibly a mistake. However, still, like I said, Catalyte needs to have a few more importers. But yeah, the importers would have been quite the bottom like to destroy them. Granted, it still slows Catalyte down a bit, but Wobas probably going to go for... Well, like going for anti-air. Going for more Zion Pulsers. I am a little bit surprised that Catalyte isn't going... For, I mean, Catalyte's probably going, going to go for air at some point. Wobass, however, I'm surprised he didn't jump back the Zion Pulsers, regroup, heal them up, and then go in again, because that's kind of a Vecchier thing to do. Catalyte... Actually, Wobass does have his stuff set up, the Com Hub. He does have a Com Hub set up over in the southwest, so he can see this expansion, can see the middle of the map. And very nice skip placement as well. This is exactly where Zion Pulsers want to be to skip. Factory, very vulnerable. However, this can be spotted. Catalyte is well aware of this, although Catalyte is actually further back, but this comm center does give vision of the up ground here. The high ground here, therefore, will be vulnerable. These ATHCs will get the Zion Pulsers. The Zion Pulsers, regardless, are still in a good position and will be able to get rid of the ATHCs without issue, although one of them will actually go down. One of the Zion Pulsers goes down. The ATHCs are going to continue to be built as Catalyte does have quite a lot of resources, though one of the crates has gone dry. Probably wants to move, or should probably move a couple of his RPs down here. Four of the RPs probably should go down here that just jumped off this crate. While the rest of the RPs, actually all the RPs in Q Plasma went back to Lift Crystal as well. And back to the factories going down. The ATHCs are doing a great job trying to defend. Actually, a really good job trying to defend, forcing these Zion Bulses to a new position. And this mean that Catalyte has, I think, a bit of an order advantage here. Although Wobus can teleport around faster than the Catalyte can move. So at the same time, the fact that that skip teleport is there does give Wobus a massive advantage, and that positioning, able to go to the ATCs, able to go to the importers. Catalyte does build an extra importer, but Wobus will be able to tear that apart, as well as killing a few importers, sorry, killing a few RPs. Possibly killing importers, but definitely killing RPs. However, Wobus moving into a bad position. One of his Zion Pulses is getting caught out of position, not able to kill anything. It goes down instead. The other two Zion Pulses is able to take out a few RPs, however slowing Catalyte down further, but Catalyte at this point already getting machinery and ground units. However, Catalyte does not have any other expansions outside of their main base. Their main base is it. They don't have anything to the south and nothing to the north. Absolutely nothing. While Wobus, on the other hand, back in their main base, continuing to build up vehicles, not actually building any economy themselves, and still behind. I mean, definitely heavy on resources, and I think Wobus is not quite dealing enough damage. I think Catalyte will be able to just build up Getting a few Aryans, getting a couple Tornads, actually getting a Blackbird, that is that is an uncommon choice, but Catalyte will be able to push off these Zion Pulsers, and a few more Zion Pulsers coming in, but the thing is, Wobas, while saving one, did not save most of them. So, Catalyte, still in a decent position. Catalyte's biggest weakness at this point is the fact that there's only two crates of Liquid Crystal in their base, and Frank, well, one of them is almost done, too. That's the biggest problem is that Catalyte's about to run out of resources very quickly due to lack of expansion. Catalyte needs to expand, doesn't really have the military with, with which to do that safely. Wobas, on the other hand, could expand at their leisure. I mean, they are on they are on the offensive. They have an army. They could actually attack once again right now, and I think that would do the trick. I wasn't sure, but Catalyte is not building much of an army at this point. Does have the production for it, but is much more focused, looks like, on rebuilding their economy. And I don't actually see them rebuilding anything other than they're trying to heal in a few units getting gate tech that okay that was their big thing to save up for was the Q plasma for gate tech however Zion Pulse are coming in and I think once Wobas figures out the Catalyze is fairly vulnerable Wobas is just gonna rush in with everything getting more foundations themselves Wobas not looking likely to get air units looking to continue just on the ground offensive still also surprising that Wobas has not gone for any expansions of their own like, nothing on the map anywhere, really. There's just 
there's that comm hub here, which makes it kind of safe, but otherwise, no. Really surprising. However, we do have, once again, another harassment coming in, but like I said, no resources. Nothing left in the main base. Catalyte does not have any further expansions, and unfortunately for them, that really is going to leave their economy just dead in the water. Honestly, Wobot should be attacking the importers just because of the fact that the RPs are basically doing nothing. That the fact the importers are weaker, but that Zion Pulsar is kind of moot. Still, the Teth Pulsar is coming in, and if Wobas does go for Aryans, goes for Teth Turchers, could also be very useful. But Wobas not doing much of anything. Not expanding, despite the fact that they definitely have the advantage on aggression. And not going for air or any sort of tech. I think Wobas is saving for gate tech as well. Definitely could afford it at this point. Hasn't actually bought it yet. Could have afforded it for a little while, and there it goes. Okay, Wobas realizing that they can afford gate tech, getting gate tech of their own, which they are in a better position to use, but at the same time, Catalyte already has it. All right, Wobas, 30 seconds up from where Catalyte is. Catalyte's already getting Chronoporter and Teleporter. I think, best case scenario, Wobas will have their slip gate at the same time that Catalyte's Teleporter and Chronoporter complete and recharge. Because, of course, Vecchio does not require the recharge timing on the slip gate, but even then, Wobas doesn't have a whole lot of Q Plasma. Getting a bit more, probably going for a Chronoport attack to try to finish off what they started in Catalyte's base, but even then, they honestly could have attacked sooner. I, really, they could have attacked sooner, gotten rid of a bunch of importers, gotten rid of even more RPs. The Blackbirds are a bit of a problem, but a couple test pulsers would have at least helped out a bit, maybe killed one of them. Still, enough Zion Pulsar just would have been too much damage. Would have killed Catalyte quickly enough. But no, Wobas instead just going for Gate Tech Wars. So we are going to have Gate Tech versus Gate Tech. We are going to probably have Chrono Shenanigans. Definitely Catalyte going in that direction. The 12 minute mark. And the Chrono Porter is just about done. Three more importers being built up. So Catalyte probably going to switch over to Mass Infantry. And yeah, there's another armory to support that idea. But still very surprising. Neither player goes to expand. I, I don't understand this. This is... I'm not familiar with this meta. Normally, players will expand by now. I mean, Wobas does have gate tech. Not... Hasn't got a slipgate, though. For some bizarre reason, has not built a slipgate. Probably doesn't realize that Catalyte also went for gate tech, but... Okay, there we go. There is a the slipgate. And... A little late, though. Catalyte's Chronoporter has already come up, already recharged. A Chronoport can happen right now. In fact, Wobas is two minutes ahead. And just building the slipgate. I mean, they're at the present. They need to be further back. They do not realize Catalyte has, has chronoporting. I think Catalyte is going to take the game because of that. So we'll see. Wobas did have a large enough army earlier on that I think this may just even things out. However, on the other hand, it's a matter of whether or not we're waiting for the chronoport. I think Catalyte may wait for the chronoporter to be done back at the destination time before actually chronoporting. So you can chronoport and then teleport and then just teleport all the infantry inside of Wobas's base and win that way. Because Wobas has no backup bases, no expansions, no other foundations around the map. And Catalyte coming in. I'm oh, sorry. Wobas coming in. Sees... Sees the attack... Or sees the Chronoport. Or Chronoporter, at least. Doesn't see any Chronoports. Catalyte has not actually Chronoported yet. Still building up a lot of units with which to do so. And I think... Probably going to see a Chronoport further up... Yeah, much further up. There's just not enough current energy to be able to command all these units right now. I mean, Catalyte has 26 potential orders, but has been using a lot of them so far. And I think... Well, actually, not that many units. There, he... Okay, all these imagery could be current order back in one go. Right now, if the current energy bar was allowed to fill up to full. So you have 29 orders right now. It's... Actually, wow. Actually, it's pretty close. Yeah, there we go. It's like 20 orders. So there's 20 infantry right here. However, none of them being chronoported yet. Everything being teleported into this, into the statue base. This is a great move by Catalyte. Exactly what he needs to do because that will basically prevent Wobas from harassing because Wobas won't even realize they're there. However, Wobas not even going for the chronoport, going for the teleport instead, which is rather risky because a chronoport is likely to happen. Going to attack the chronoport, however, just to stop it further in the future. But there's three whole minutes. Actually... No, never mind. This is an echo attack. I missed this. This is actually it looks like this party got chronoported before going out to attack. So this attack here we're seeing right now is an echo. And Catalyte has not gone for a revenge chronoport. Wobas, on the other hand, like I said, very likely chronoported back here. 
We don't see it yet, though, unfortunately. But yeah, this this appears to be an echo. Possibly to stop Catalay from chronoporting back from the future, which is not a bad idea. It's definitely a worthwhile thing to do. However, also works as a distraction because it means that Catalay probably staying paying attention here. Now Wobass jumping back to when that chronoport attack occurred, when the uppercut occurred, the real attack. And Wobass is going to take the game as a result of this. Catalyte has not gone for a Chronoport yet, despite having had this Chronoport for a while and having had enough Chrono Energy as well at some points to command all these units to Chronoport them all back. Has not taken advantage of this, and that will be their undoing. So Wobass is about to take it. That was really clever. As, he, as you can see here on the timeline, the attack damage is going away. The echo is ca or the fact that it's an echo is catching up to it. But still, that was distraction enough. Because there was the uppercut. And the uppercut actually didn't do as much damage as it looks like would have been hoped. Damaged a few of the RPs and a few of the importers, but ultimately didn't do much. Didn't kill the Chrono Porter, that's for sure. That is that is a big problem. If it killed the Chrono Porter, then Wobass would be in a much better position right now. But no, Wobass not actually that much better off than they were beforehand. The only advantage at this point is that Catalyte has not actually gone for an attack. I mean, Catalyte is definitely in a great position to build up, but not gone for an attack themselves. And Wobass has just lost all their forces to a failed uppercut. However, correctly predicting the North Base. Very nice read there. I mean, it's not uncommon for players to expand on North Base. And Wobass was spot on about that. Catches out all these RPs, and it looks like the number of RPs was reduced. That was primarily what was hit. Catalyte has had their economy heavily damaged. However, that's just their RPs. So much resources and storage that it doesn't make much difference. Like, the Corona Porter is the key target at this point. Like, if there's anything that needs to be killed, it is that Corona Porter. That is the thing that needs to be killed. The infantry is also a good idea, but Catalyte can Corona Porter back units to get back here. Getting rid of the Corona Porter would disrupt, or would I, in theory, disrupt more, but Catalyte has not used it yet. So actually, at this point, the infantry is the better option, but only because they're easy to kill. Yeah, that's actually. Not a bad position either, though a nice teleport here from Catalyte does flank out these Iron Pulsars, killing all of them. And Wobass just does not have anything to work with. He has no fallback plan. Like, they got nothing. I mean, like I said, nice destruction of the statue base. Getting rid of all the RPs, basically. But even without RPs, Catalyte has tons of money in reserve, especially for the infantry, a heavy strategy they're going for. And Wobass hasn't expanded. Hasn't even teleported their RPs anywhere. There's just nowhere on the map their RPs are set up. Nothing. Not even in the statue base, surprisingly enough, despite the fact that Wobass has Zion Pulsars there and knows that it's free. No, nothing has been set up there. Although, Wobass, nice trick there, moving their units away, getting out of this area so the infantry teleport out of position. Not, however, taking advantage of this by moving in when the infantry were teleported out of position in order to attack from a different angle while the infantry were just too far away to respond. So unfortunately did not quite get the follow-up on that. Not sure if he was even thinking about that. Or they, I should say, were even thinking about that. Still getting used to that. I'm sorry. I just... Getting used to it. Bear with me. Anyway. Wobass. Still kind of position. Still kind of figuring out where to go. Is teleporting units to the north, or teleporting RPs to the north, but not building any new RPs. Very surprising at that. Or foundations. A couple of Shinveers in play. And... Uh, okay. 20 minutes into the game and no aerial control center. I am surprised. I'm genuinely shocked, actually. I mean... Especially what with what's being fought against. All these imagery, like, Shin Tercher would just destroy them. Or if not... Yeah, well, Shin Tercher wouldn't be a bad idea. That would... That would help quite a lot. But no. No aerial control center at all. And... We do have a Zion Veer that's ready to build some expansion. 20 minutes in the game, a little late, but honestly, I'm a little surprised that neither player has really expanded that much. Especially given that Wobus has been in a really great position to expand. And Tath Pulsar finally being brought to bear against the Blackbird. Not unfortunately able to do too much, and Catalyte teleporting away to try to deal with that attack. But it's kind of difficult. I mean, the thing is, Wobass does have the advantage on teleportation. Like, Vekir is just better at teleportation. Especially once they get gate tech and every single unit has skipped teleport. They are just better. They're better at it. However, Wobass is such a massive army that it's rather difficult for... Sorry, Catalyst is such a massive army, it's rather difficult for Wobass to do anything about it. And 
Another crop of RPs being teleported over to the statue base. Looks like... Well, that was surprising, actually. I didn't expect that to happen. I thought those were all destroyed. I guess not. I guess some of the RPs did survive that were not already teleported there. That or Catalyte just cancelled it and then went in later. Regardless, neither player really pushing too hard. Like I said, Wobats does have the expansion in the north. The northwest expansion. Catalyte does have the statue expansion. And Wobas. No further Chrono Boards. No surprises there. But also... No further tech? I don't know what they're trying to do, honestly. They're not getting Aerial Control Center for any tech. And Catalyte, I would have expected they would go for a teleport into Wobus's base. At least a couple infantry just to scout out. Like, one or two marines here to scout it out. But no, it's not happening. And the Zion Pulsar coming back up to the north. This is probably where Catalyte is teleporting their forces to try to deal with that. Teleporting a few infantrymen over to... Or, not men. Some of them are women. Established in the campaign that it's actually equal opportunity in CISO as military. But, yeah, infantry are not being teleported in. One of them is to build up more RPs. Actually, that... Oh! Yeah, the infantry are going over to the north, but they are stuck there now. And Wobas chronoporting at the same time. Well, not the same time, sorry. Chronoporting three minutes ahead, but it looks like the arrival is about the same time. Scheduled to arrive such that these Zion Pulsars can then be sent over here while the infantry are out of position, destroy the main base. And these infantry are stuck in the statue expansion until a carrier is built or another teleporter is built. So this teleporter, however, is fairly dangerous. Bear that in mind, this teleporter will allow Catalyte to jump straight into Wobas's base. Wobas does not really have the forces to deal with this quite yet, but at the same time, if Wobas does manage to attack... Well, no, just not even going there. Or, no, he is. Oh, there. They are going to the, to the statue base. And it looks like it'll be pretty good timing, too. No, never mind. They're not going to the statue base. They are, in fact, taking advantage of the fact that Catalyze forces are out of position and attacking the main base directly. Just tear apart everything. And get rid of this Blackbird. If this Blackbird goes away, that will basically do it. So it looks like, unfortunately, Wobbles' forces are a little bit mixed. Well aware of the teleporter, though. Wobas can see that teleporter. Did see it before the RPs were destroyed. And this Blackbird is not about to die, unfortunately. It is, however, not healing anything, but it is also not about to die. One of the factories is going down, but the Marines have all teleported... Or, actually, not even teleported back. They've been just rebuilt. More Marines and Special Ops have been built to deal with the, the Zion Pulsars. One of the factories goes down, but that's not a big deal. Catalyte could rebuild that without any problem. And Wobas... Finally getting an air control center 25 minutes or 26 minutes in getting a couple more RPs as well actually teleporting a few more RPs down there. That wasn't those aren't new RPs. They're just teleported. And another chronoport. Wait, is this that wasn't catalyzed, was it? No, it was it was not catalyzed. That was Wobes's chronoport. Looks like they're trying to go for permaclone, actually. I don't see the departure anymore, and That's a little suspect that's a little suspect, but even then. Wobas does have... Well, doesn't have a great position. I mean, all these Marines are over to the statue expansion, just stopping Wobas from taking it. And it looks like those RPs were... Actually, were they destroyed? Yeah, it looks like... Okay, so some Zion Pulses came in and actually tore apart the RPs. So at this point, Catalyte has no RPs. Has Chronoport back a bunch of infantry, though. But that's all they have to work with. They have no RPs. Like, none at all. So they can't even convert the Q Plasma to the Glico Crystal. They are stuck in the water. All they have are infantry and chronoporting, and they basically chronoport these infantry once. Not even all of them, just most of them once. That's it. However, a good teleport into Wobas's base will win the game. But that's kind of risky. And these infantry are stuck out here. The so Wobas basically it's just a matter of time before they win, because Wobas does have an economy and Catalyte does not. And cannot. Catalyte is locked out of an economy at this point. Trying to go for permaclones instead. Still can only permaclone once, but that might be enough infantry for that to work favorably. And there we go. Wobas teleports into Catalyte's base, goes for the direct attack, tries to win the game. This is all in. If Catalyte loses this attack, this will be a complete failure. And even if they win, Wobas has a lot of backup. They have Shin Pulsers, or the Shin Veer. 
Not Shin Pulsers. No one builds Shin Pulsers except that last game where they did. They have Shin Veer around the map. They design Veer around the map. I mean, they can... It's a matter of getting the infantry. That's the big thing. But Wolbass, back in their main base, doesn't have a whole lot of units right now. In fact, does Wolbass even have... Yes, Wolbass does have Shin Veer. This is key. This Shin Veer here is going to be the difference between Wolbass living and dying in this game. And actually, that and this Corona Port, although the Corona Port is really risky. Oh, wait, what am I saying? There is a Shin Pulsar. That, that was exactly wrong. My previous comment was wrong. However, that being said, it looks like Catalyte... Did Catalyte lose all the... No, that can't be right. Oh, well, yeah, actually, it is. It, wait, what? No, this is echoed out. This is... Hang on a sec. Did... I... Oh, I guess Catalyte... Jumping back to the 27-23 mark, Catalyte apparently either echoed out or lost the units to Chronoport with. Which means that Wobas didn't even lose their main base. At this point, Wobas definitely has the game. There's just no doubt about it. Wobas, Wobas has this game. It is, or at least, maybe... We are in apparently paradox country. Oh right, the Chrono, the permaclone. Apparently that did not work, ideally. And also, Catalyte teleporting all their forces over to the Statue Expansion to basically destroy the Statue Expansion, getting rid of all the crates here, which is fine. Wobas has the rest of the map they can work with. Wobas can be fine with that because the rest of the map has been completely untouched, completely unused. No one has actually built on the rest of the map, and Wobas has air units. So, not much to be said about that, except Wobas, get some Shin Churchers, because once you get those, you'll win. You will win. Catalyte is done. Especially having teleported all their infantry into the statue expansion, where there's no escape unless you have a teleporter or are flying. It is an island. But it looks like Wobas, just seeing what Catalyte has, not sure entirely that Catalyte has not expanded anywhere else, and Catalyte has not. Wobas is not aware fully, of course, but yeah. Doesn't realize, and goes for a skip tell. Wait, what? Uh, yeah, that just happened. We have a skip torpedo, a super weapon, which actually was a little bit unimposing, but yeah. That was the Vecure super weapon, which we never see. We don't see super weapons much in this game, but they do exist. As do transports, but they're basically super weapons in their own right. And Wolves could build those if they wanted to, actually. No spare foundations at the moment, but yeah, an Inceptor could be built. However, at this point, yeah, that... Wobas has just taken the game with the fact that they actually have units in position, and Catalyte's units are here to the north, if they exist at all. And frankly, I'm not entirely sure that they do exist because it looked like either they just died or they were eliminated by the attempt to perm clone that failed. Either way, Catalyte has lost this game, Wobas has taken it, and we actually got to see a skip torpedo. Which rarely happens, but hey, it did. It actually happened. We actually had a skip torpedo, and it actually did something. See the explosion? I can't remember the explosion. No, the explosion's not like Okay, explosion needs is only good at the right speed. Sorry about that. The game is dragging on a bit. Anyway, Wobas has this game. Like, Catalyte has basically lost. But, Catalyte has never really been one to surrender when they lose. And they've also completely cleaned out the entire statue expansion, because why not? Out of spite, but really not meaningfully. I believe there was one game where the opposite happened. I think it might have been Cybernetic Pony, who... Because he likes to do this, but I don't know if it was him. Who who took the statue expansion... Actually, it might have been Golda. Took the statue expansion and annihilated everything else on the map. But no, this is the opposite, and it doesn't quite work as well. Because the statue expansion is a nice, safe-ish island expansion. Whereas the rest of the map is, well, the rest of the map. And there's a lot of resources on the rest of the map. So yeah, Catalyte has lost this game. And is, as usual, not surrendering. But yeah, that's game. So I hope you enjoyed that. And another skip torpedo. And that will be, that'll be it. So hope you enjoyed that. I'm another game for you guys in... Actually, well, yeah, Catalyte's out. Getting skipped torpedoed in the infantry. Yeah, that, that just...
Made that have to happen. Seriously, Catalyte, surrender for crying out loud. Thankfully, this isn't a live tournament setting. But, yeah. Ah, let's skip teleport at normal speed. So, I'm oh, sorry, skip torpedo at normal speed. Yeah, even Wobaz is calling him on that one. So anyway, Catalyst's never going to surrender because he never surrenders, which is mildly annoying. But that doesn't matter. We'll go on to the next game. So next game will be, I believe, a considerably shorter game. Will be a game between Monkuki and Sharadan on Rooftop Showdown, which hasn't actually come up recently. Stay tuned for that. It'll be up in just a moment.